So we are on week four of Wellbeing Wednesdays and this week we are talking about to glam or to not give a damn. <laughs> so we're kind of discussing this week whether we're bothering with putting our hair like and makeup on, whether we're deciding to give ourselves a bit of downtime during this, whether we're having a bit of a pamper. Um, it looks like we've all gone drunk tonight. <laughs> <laughs> We all look like so much more fresh face than we normally do. <laughs> anyway, me, I'm talking for myself there. Um, so I've like been doing some stuff for work today. So I've got my face and off. This is the first time in five weeks that I've actually done something with my hair. <laughs> but how are we all feeling? What are we all doing? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm waiting this time because usually I interrupt I everyone. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I put a bit of um, I put a bit of a poll out to some of our followers um, earlier in today to ask them actually just to give us um, some prompts, and the majority said that um, they were using it as a time to indulge in a bit of self care. So I'd purchased like some good hair like treatment products, some skincare mm -hmm. products, and quite a lot of them said they were trying to learn how to um, do their makeup properly. So doing YouTube tutorials of like winged eyeliner. Somebody said they were determined to be able to apply magnetic lashes by the end of lockdown. <laughs> and quite a lot of them just investing a bit of time in, not necessarily glamming up, but the skin and the hair and learning different techniques for curling the hair and trying out new makeup. And that was yeah, a lot of We wouldn't normally get to do, like, because we've got all this downtime, haven't we, for those of us that aren't working and... I guess a lot of it's trying to be productive, but it is quite nice to come out of it the other side, I guess, with, with new skills. And if those are your new skills or new hobbies, then that's quite a nice thing to do, isn't it? Because me, I yes. personally have been, so I've been, like I say, it's the first time in five weeks I've done anything with my hair other than I've been washing it and just covering it in treatment and leaving it. I've not put a hairdryer on it. I've not put tongs on it because it gets so wrecked at work constantly, day in, day out. I just thought this was a perfect opportunity. And with the amount with it, uh, it'll be great for you to leave it. The amount of bleach that you've had on, you know, I obviously know what you have on your hair colour-wise. So for you, leaving it, that is the best possible thing you could do. Just keep putting treatments on. And is that, so that's a good thing to do then, Ella. And what about like, so the fact that a lot of us are not naturally blonde or brunette <laughs> or any of those colours. Well, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> So is there like, what can we be doing for our, our colour in between? Is it, is it best if we just leave it and we just try and like hide, which we're doing anyway? Or are there you know what? If, you, if, you're a, if you're a brunette and you feel like that you've got a bit warm or you feel like that you've got a bit red, there's toners that you can get. Again, people can inbox me, message me, send me colours of the hair and I'll try and help them out. But no box dyes. If people can stay away from box dyes, if people can stay away from any semi-permanent or permanent colour whilst we're in lockdown, that's the best thing to do because when you come back to the salon, it's just going to be more money for you, which you're not going to want to spend. It's going to be more time for us that we're not going to have because of the amount of people that we're going to have to try and fit in. Um, the amount of people that are going to want the hair doing after lockdown actually scares me. I'm getting anxiety about it. <laughs> <laughs> about how it's going to be great because I'm going to be dead busy. But You're never um, going to start working, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I feel like I should start doing it through my letterbox now so that people, <laughs> you know, I've not got that many people when they're coming in. Um, and blondes, um, you can't highlight your, your own hair. You can, obviously, I can only tell people to not go and get box dyes. People are going to go and do it if they want to go and do it. It's my recommendation not to leave it for as long as you possibly can do. But if you do feel like your blonde's gone dull, there are loads of things out there. There's purple shampoos, there's well of colour freshers, there's um, things that you can apply on easily, literally in the shower, rinse it off, and it'll last you until your next wash. Um, and they're not um, invasive, they're not bad on your hair, they're great for your hair. Um, so if anything, they're the things that I would recommend to do. And just give your hair a break, like when really... Have we ever had the time as women? I've been colouring my hair since I was 17, since I started working for Terrence Paul. I have never had a break in not colouring my hair. This is the first time ever. I'm due to have my extensions taken out. That's why my hair up's in a ponytail, because it looks absolutely horrendous. Um, <laughs> I'm due to have my colour done. I've got greys coming out that I didn't know that I had, and I'm 26 yes, now. <laughs> You know, it is, you know, and that's another thing. If women have got dark hair or even blonde and they've got greys, there's amazing things for that as well. You know, there's the root colour touch up. You don't have to walk around with greys if you don't if you don't need to. But then yeah. again, you buy a box dye colour and and make it 
you know, and overlap it and do things to your hair that really don't need to be put on. And what so about treatments? Like, what would be some good, like, conditioning treatments and things if you were going to well, do look after it? Everything, well, again, it is, it's a lot harder to say, like, I can, I can reel off a ton of treatments, but again, it's, it's situated to your hair condition, what your hair's like. So again, that's why I'm saying my inbox is always open. People can always inbox me, tell me what their hair condition's like. If it's thick, I can give them uh, recommendations for that. We also have Terrence Paul online, um, which is back up and running now. It wasn't running at the beginning of lockdown, but we have got it back up and running. Um, we are getting some discount codes out there for people that um, do want um, to buy some treatments and invest in their hair and buy the right products. Um, so again, it is all down to what your hair is like. Me, I've got obviously extensions in. I've got blonde hair. I bleach it. I curl it. I do everything to it that's possible. Um, and I use Penetrate Shampoo and Conditioner, which is all protein based. So your hair's lacking that protein. If it looks limp, then obviously that'd be great. If you've not got any volume, then a volume shampoo. It's, it's, all, it's all depending on your hair type and what you're looking for. Is there anything that like you should avoid? Because I, so I've basically got like a, a box of things that have been sent to me over time. And during this lockdown, going through that box and just putting all creams all over myself. <laughs> so, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, that sounds good. I'll just throw that one on tonight and try that. But is there anything that you should avoid, or are all those kind of things, like you say, avoiding box colours and things like that? But yeah, these are all like conditioning treatments and things. Is it pretty much just to see how they go and see how they are with you and? Again, if you're getting things sent to you, always give them a go. But I'm the type of person, I look at a review for anywhere that I go to. I look at a review for a restaurant, a hotel, anywhere. Always look at reviews for shampoos and conditioners. Always look at reviews for treatments. Always look, it just reviews are the best thing because there's always someone out there that will go, this didn't work on my hair and my hair's like this. This did work on my hair and it's like this. So everybody's different. Everybody's hair texture's different. Um, but you'll find that, like you and me, Sarah, are, are with our hair being so blonde, it dries out so quickly. Yeah. Uh, we shine. We don't get anything like that. So if we can find a product, and if you're putting treatments on and you find that they're working for you, whatever they're sending you, then great. There's not anything that I would say, oh, no, don't use that. The only thing I don't recommend is going buy any shampoo and conditioner from Boots or Superdrug because the likes of Tresemme, Pantene, they're fabulous. They're all right. They're cheap. They look great on the TV, but actually what they do is, is they put this really thick layer of plastic on your hair and they give you that fake shine. And then that's where it looks like you've got shine, but actually you've got worse buildup of plastic polymers on your hair shaft. And then that, it, you, you can't style your hair. When you try and put straighteners over it, you get like this glass effect. Um, also, if you want to curl your hair, you get like ridges in your hair and that's just not something that you, you, you don't want that. You want it to look fresh bouncy sleek you, you want it to look like it's just come out of the tv really but you, you don't want to use those products you want to use the best you want to use salon hair care well that sounds like everything i use <laughs> like, oh no oh, oh, oh no uh, no i you i've used um you're gonna hate this head and shoulders <laughs> you get your hair colored well i'm really bad with my hair so you can see that that to there is my natural colour. <laughs> and I'll get it done in probably about twice a year. Okay. And then, just because I'm so busy. I should go more often. And then she, she does it so that I don't have a, have it, like, she doesn't do it right. It grows out naturally. So, yeah, so it grows out like this pretty much. But it is yeah. really dull now. Um, but I've got naturally quite curly hair. So I usually, if I'm, like, on a day-to-day -day basis, I often leave it wet and it's quite just like wild but the only thing with that I thought I was doing good with that so I wasn't constantly straightening it but I feel like when I leave it wet it's making my scalp drier right okay do I need to not be really it just makes it really dry and itchy the, the, that is because if you can well, imagine like, like a damp cloth on the side and not drying it properly it yeah. never dries the same as what you would do if you were to put it on a radiator than leaving it on the side damp and it yeah. drying up. So everything is always, it all, it all just depends on your hair and what you're doing to it. If you're getting out of the shower, you're using a great shampoo and conditioner and then you're coming out and you're using an oil, a heat protection spray, a detangler spray, um, combing it all through and then drying it, blasting it off and smoothing it over just with a paddle brush. It doesn't even have to yeah. be around. 
patch even if you were just to smooth your hair and it look smooth then at least you know it's dried properly and there's no damage on the hair um yeah that's better than leaving it wet definitely because if you leave your hair wet the chances are even though you're putting conditioner on and conditioner if you can imagine a cuticle like that and you've got lots of different levels coming off the hair like um like these coming off the hair a conditioner closes it and makes it sure that it's closed and that's when you don't get your split ends and your damage whereas there's only so much a conditioner can do that's where then heat comes into it and heat closes it so if you then leave your hair wet there's the odd few that are still like that and then that's when you get your split ends so really it is a bit it's a bit of give and take you know it's you can use heat if you want to you don't have to if you don't want to it's completely up to you but I wouldn't do it all the time leaving your hair wet I never do that's really interesting because that is what I've been doing. <laughs> now I'm doing the right thing, going, I haven't put any heat on it. And that's really, maybe I should be drying off a little bit. Amazing. It's fine. Though. So say like if you were to go out into the sun with um, wet hair, then, you know, that's still like a drying agent. It's still on it. But again, you've still then got problems with the fact that you've got UV rays on it. So then you need something that's going to protect you from UV rays, not from that heat. Yeah all these things we're learning <laughs> um, and then skin care like what have we all been doing with our skin have we been wearing makeup have we like have we've all clearly got makeup on tonight but have we been bothering oh, yeah, I've, been been actually, have you not? I've got my sc- I've face. got um I've got mascara on and that's all I've got on oh my what have you been you doing then Claire I I bought some um Products called uh, by the ordinary. I have the worst skincare regime. It involves like a little baby wipe or something. Like on the morning, really bad skincare. I've never looked after my skin, but fortunately, I think it must be genetics. I've never suffered with spots or dry skin or anything. But I went to this um, skin event with Robin a while ago and kind of thought, right, I'm nearly 40 next year. I best start doing something um, with my skin. And so I bought some. Um, some skincare from the, the ordinary because that was one that came up as that this event that they said was quite reasonably priced and i'm saying was is okay but I, katie will tell me if it's not um <laughs> and i started using um a proper cleanser um with like a hot muslin cloth and to, to after that um vitamin c cream hyaluronic acid i think it's called and retinol at night and wow. i've been doing that for about two months now quite consistently and it's made a massive difference to my skin I rarely wear foundation now where I used to wear it I just wear mascara and sometimes I'll put a bit of blusher on but that's probably the most I've had on um since March the 16th amazing well that's working then isn't it and drinking loads of water is the other thing I've been drinking miles more water amazing because I've been in lockdown and having the time to do that yeah Yes. Yeah, you'll, you'll definitely find the water is going to be making a massive difference. And the fact that you're using some product now when you never have before, that's why you're going to see a big difference, but definitely genetics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I put SPF on, which I'd, I'd never used to do that either. Amazing. It's the best anti aging cream is your SPF. Yeah, I've been put, I put that on every single day now, no matter what the weather is, because I didn't realise you had to. Yeah. yeah. I'm taking the right steps. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> 40 years too late. <laughs> no, it's never too late. Never too late. <laughs> so is it a good thing that we're if we if we are staying away from makeup at the moment, Katie, is that gonna make a, a difference to our skin or should we be doing something? Is there what you what's yeah, your well, you, you could kind of look at it from two different points. So yes, leaving makeup off is great because I know everyone kind of says that skin will breathe, skin doesn't breathe, we get oxygen from blood. But the fact that you're not putting product on your skin every single day and then probably leaving it on while you sleep and everything like that, it gives your uh, skin chance to to rebuild, I guess you can say. But I think there's probably going to be a lot of people watching this that will say, well, I've left my makeup off for five weeks and my skin's horrendous. Um, So I think you need to look at it that, um, well, from a few different angles. One, your skin might be uh, breaking out or feeling a bit lackluster and grey because of the stress that you're going through at this moment in time so it's not just a case of leave off your makeup you're going to have this glowing skin that's possibly not really going to happen um and then what people then generally do is they can panic and then they panic by with harsh exfoliants glycolic acids alkyl hydroxy acid and just try and strip and strip and strip and then they have more issues in the long run 
So I think if you um, are having skin issues, then definitely, you know, speak to one of our skin therapists and we can help you in the right direction because there are